Hi guys, I'm Cam Chu. Recently, I'm really interested in rocket fuel, and I think making some of it would be super cool. But when I search for it on YouTube, and there were only numerous videos about how to make hydrogen instead of 1,1 dimethyl hydrogen, often called SUDMH for short, and that's more commonly used in the rocket engine. So today, I'm just going to make some of it and show you the procedure. The method I use is to react the potassium cyanate with dimethylene hydrochloride to form a new compound, and then let it react with alkaline sodium hypochlorite solution, and finally got the product. This method has been used for more than 60 years, but its easy and useful way it has never been shown on YouTube for no reason. And to begin with, I weighed about 240 grams of urea and 210 grams of potassium carbonate. Then mix them up and put them all in a persalian couple. This reaction should go on under the heating of gas stove. What's happening here is that the urea melts and reduces the ammonia, which can seize the bubbles, and isocyanic acid, which could react with the potassium carbonate to form potassium cyanate. And that's what I want to got. What the reaction is going on here, I have to mention something vital. First, the glass beaker is not recommended to use as a container when heating up the mixture, because it would be easily cracked. Second, the normal stainless steel container is not recommended either, because one of the main ingredients of the alloy, chromia, would react with the melt alkali and make your product dirty, and also destroy your container. But the couple made by pure iron is especially useful. However, it's usually too small to use. So the most useful one, in my point of view, is the proceeding couple. The reason is that it is cheap, tolerant to high temperature and melted alkali. As the mixture melted and bubbles coming out, the reaction is going to end. A few minutes later, there's no more bubbles came out, which means it is finished now. So I take away the couple and pour all the liquid into a metal dish, and wait for it to cool down. When it's ready, I put it all in the mortar and grind it into powder. I then weigh about 110 grams of potassium cyanate and 100 grams of dimethylene hydrochloride, and soak each of them in approximately 500 meters of water. Then, pour the dimethylamine hydrochloride solution in the flask and add 70 grams of concentrated sulfuric acid. After it's cooled down, add in all the potassium cyanide solution within 30 minutes. When it's finished, move away the ice pass and wait for another 30 minutes, then heat it up with the electric heater. It's recommended to use a vacuum pump to remove the excess water because simply heating it up would cut the yield in half. With enough, I pour out all the solution with some crystals into two beakers and keep them in the fridge overnight to make them cool enough for the next procedure, which should go in on under a low temperature. While the solution is cooling down, I prepared another beaker of thick solution of sodium carbonate. It would be used to react with calcium hypochlorite powder to make thick sodium hypochlorite solution. Since this solution is unstable at room temperature, solution is necessary to be cooled enough. The molar ratio of cosine hypochlorite and 1,1 dimethyl urea is 2 to 1, which means the molar ratio of sodium hypochlorite and dimethyl urea is 1 to 1, or slightly excessive. The next day, I pour all the solution back in the flask, then pour all the calcium hypochlorite powder into sodium carbonate solution and stir the mixture to make it react completely. When it's all ready, I put the mixture into flask and wait for it to react completely. About six hours later, I take away the ice pads and build a distillation setup. to collect the fraction from 104 Celsius to 108 Celsius, and then perform a fractional distillation to obtain the thick solution of UDMH. To show you how violent it is when reacting with nitric acid, I take out a few meters of pure nitric acid with little nitrogen dioxide soaked in it and dropping a little UDMH solution in it. As you can see, 
the two compounds just react violently and explode. It's really cool. That's all. Subscribe and see you next.